Here's an interesting story when I was young. You see, when I was a boy, I shot three birds on a fence. <laughs> uh, the karma of that haunts me to this day. Nice morning, ain't it, mister? And it was a cold fall day. No snow on the plains. But the thoughts of snow was definitely in the air. My breath was crisp and chilled. There was no way to know what I was about to do. A good day for birding, I would say. Morning, mister. I sat there shooting my paper target that morning for two hours. I was a dead eye, as they say. <laughs> Even with corrected lenses, I could hit anything I shot at. The weapon I had was a Red Rider BB gun. Yep. This device could be loaded with dozens of lead pellets, about one quarter of the size of a pea, if that's an uh, imaginable piece of weaponry. Basically, deadly to nothing, <laughs> dangerous only to a little boy's eyes. After a couple of weeks of practice with my Christmas present during the winter months, I had thought I had done about as much damage as I, as I could to that one target that came with the gun. There was little training after all. Any child who had seen a western uh, gets the concept of a rifle, even if it's a BB gun, but uh, not deadly. <laughs> I can honestly uh, cannot recall my father uh, instructing me on safe usage of a gun beyond the simple words, never aim at anything unless you intend to kill it. <laughs> from a cardboard box, the, the dimensions of a uh, milk carton from a school lunch, Hello. I would pour a dozen or so pellets into my cupped pond ham and then feed them into the loaded chamber of the BB gun. The cardboard container had simply rustic graphics which implied a nostalgia for simpler times. While I had not yet seen a Christmas story in its entirety, I was indeed a precocious by spectacle boy excited to lose myself to the majestic of the wild west. Unbeknownst to me, a rite of passage had occurred. A father had begun trusting his elder son to carry a weapon through not such a deadly device as a handgun or hunting rifle. The parent approved. of their son with his rural setting spin, spending his free time shooting a, at targets perhaps some day hoping for a real gun that he could join his father with on a hunting excursion maybe almost unaware beyond the scenes of, on television there is a culture to the gun and I had been introduced into the American pastime eagerly from my perch next to the garage, 
I stood kneeled, laid and crotched, running myself through various approaches and stances to hitting the target. Was I old enough to understand the shooting techniques of my uncle, my mother's brother, the National Guard sniper? No. Did I appreciate the culture of violence surrounding the gun surrounding a gun ownership as it now stands? Obviously, and again, no. Could I have foreseen I would be growing up in a world where school shootings would become so ambiguous at such an early age? No. There was no great political influences on my childhood beyond the rural beliefs and practices of my family, which even now do not strike me as internationally uh, politicalized or behold to the one party uh, or to the other or any belief system beyond that. I can handle myself. Thank you very much. My cousin had weapons also. They had air rifles which when loaded and hand pumped provide more velocity to uh, pellets somewhat larger than those of BB guns. They were more accurate and supposedly capable of killing a squirrel. Though I had never seen it done, my cousin was older than me. They had already been hunting with their family and maybe next season I would be uh, ready to. There was no great ritual to the BB gun, <laughs> but there was, a, there was an order. It's set up right uh, in the garage near where my father's gun safe stood and all I had to do was walk over to the safe, pick up the gun, grab my box of pellets off the shelf and I could be on my way uh, to target practice. I recall never asking permission to shoot once I had received this gift and in no way were guns a large part of my life beyond the residential effects of growing up rural. And so I practice, guided lead into the breach, out muzzled, down range, through the target, and into the walnut tree. Piff! <laughs> In hindsight, I see a distant target, tattered and constraint, in the center mass damage, atop mangled walnut bark. Piff! <laughs> In hindsight, I imagine my ability beyond what I surely was capable of such an early age with such a limited experience of equipment. Piff! But still I practiced, still I learned, still I longed for the day when I would be able to hunt with my father, perhaps just to keep busy. My parents allowed my, me hours along with my weapon. Self-defense, as a concept, is a way of life in the countryside. NRA influenced aside, and in no way were my uh, parents Bible-thumping gun nuts who installed fear of government oversight into my uh, composition of weaponry. Owning a BB gun could be even be considered uh, blasé and completely orthodox by rural standards. Just something one does when where I'm from. The preparation, the rule, the rite of passage, gun ownership may be something more than blasé today, but in my youth of practicing where a BB gun on a cold winter day felt completely normal to me. I felt cold de uh, detached from what I was doing, almost a tinge of uh, warmth but not, no, but no clear awareness of the consequences of my actions. The act of shooting a stationary target had become a bore, and I wanted to be like Dad. So across the lawn, upon our horse's pen, atop a panel of uh, nearest to me, sat three birds, sparrows perhaps, or sh uh, shallows, but certainly not meadowlarks or blue jays. 
I became eager in an evil way. Worth took hold. I knew I was doing what I was doing was wrong. With as much stealth as I could muster along the lawn, I walked towards these three targets with the determination to shoot them down from the same distance as my paper target. I laid upon the ground, placed the bird's feathers to the right in the target. Bang! The bird fluttered and fell into the brush below. Nice shot. Center bird. Bang! Another hit and dropped. Final bird, now clearly flustered and about to fly away. Bang! Three shots, three kills, dead eye. I got my feet and walked the direction to the pen. Without warning, an immediate shot of guilt washed over me. What if my parents asked what I was doing? Why I shot the birds? I would have to hide the bodies. As I approached the pen, my shame would turn into horror. There on the ground, in the field behind the brush, at the foot of the pen, where the three floundering bodies withering in pain, they were not dead, they were winged. I cried out in alarm at what I had done. I was unsure of what I'd done thinking I could just hide the bodies and finding them still alive, I realized I would have to put them down to end the, their agony and then hide my mistakes. I could take the butt of the gun and stomp them out. I could place BBs in their heads from a close range. I had to act but it was too late. In my shock, I had yelled and attracted the attention of our quarter horse. It galloped to my attention as it attempted to cross the field and upon its arrival, brought its hoops down one, two, three on top of the birds. One was smashed completely, one was decapitated, and one was still fluttering. It was its wings yet under the horse's hoop. I cried out for the horse to leave, but of course it did not understand. My mother, who had heard the commotion and was concerned, arrived and in anger took the BB gun from my grip and brought the butt down on the last living bird, meat skull ending the fiasco. No amount of berating from her could make me feel worse than I already did. Years later, I would not be able to abide hunting. Years later, the lesson I would garner from reading To Kill a Markenberg would ring even more clear. Years later, I would still question the desire for death, destruction, and devastation. <laughs>